I invite you to turn with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 14. Isaiah, chapter 14. Would you bow your hearts together with me in prayer? Father, we pause to thank you for what we have been exposed to during this time of worship and fellowship together. And now as we open your word to study a very, very, and very important principle for the days in which we live, realizing the gravity of this area, I want to offer myself as a vessel fresh to you at this very moment for cleansing, for infilling of your Holy Spirit. Please grant that the words of my mouth and meditations of my heart will be acceptable in your sight so that your designed purpose might be accomplished for each of us as individuals, as families, and as a church collective. Because as I pray, and praises for victory I give in Christ's name, Amen. As we return to Isaiah chapter 14, you will remember that we have already noticed two things about Lucifer. First of all, we notice his name in verse number 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? We looked at that in our first study several weeks ago, and we noted the antithesis of that through Jesus. We also noted in verse number 12 in our last session together that Lucifer sought to do his own will. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. And we noted how Jesus was the antithesis to that. Today we're focusing our attention on the third area, that being Lucifer aspired <coughs> to be elevated, or to be like the Most High God, in verse number 14. This is what he said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High. Now, as the result of his wanting to be that shining light, as a result of his promotion to do his own will, as a desire, as a result of his aspiration to be elevated, something happened. The Bible tells us that he was expelled from heaven. He was cast out. And in Luke chapter 10, Jesus made the following statement to the disciples then and to us today. Luke 10 and verse 18. The disciples had been sent on a journey, on a mission. And that journey and mission was to help others. They have returned, 70 of, 70 of them in Luke 18, uh, 10 and verse 17, they have returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us, through thy name, or they obey us. And then Jesus said in verse number 18, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now, lightning moves very fast, doesn't it? And God did not hesitate to take action when these things happened in the life of Lucifer. God had to take action fast because it was infecting and affecting the other angels. In fact, the book of Revelation tells us that one-third of the angels of heaven decided to follow Lucifer. 
And so God took rapid action and expelled Lucifer from heaven. That's bad. But I've got good news. And the good news is that in Jesus, we see the antithesis, or the opposite, if you will, of Lucifer in this point, as Jesus was the antithesis or the opposite in the other two points. Because while Lucifer aspired to be elevated, Jesus volunteered to lower himself. Now, to understand what this means, we must first of all understand the position, the power, and the prestige of Jesus before he lowered himself. Turn with me to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, who is the Word? That's referring to Jesus, isn't it? Now, notice in verse number 2, his position before he volunteered to Lord himself. The same was in the beginning with God. That was his position before he volunteered to Lord himself. He was with God. Notice in verse number 3, his power before he volunteered to Lord himself. All things were made by Him. How much was made by Him? All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Now, will you agree with me that that is power? Amen. Notice in verse number 4, His prestige, before He volunteered to Lord Himself. In Him was life. Now, not only... Was he with God in position? Not only did he possess power to create all things, but he had the prestige of having in himself life. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Would you agree with me that that is great prestige? Verse number 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. His position, his power, his prestige, before he volunteered to lower himself. In the book of Psalm, number 8, Psalms chapter 8, there is a prophecy given concerning the Christ that is very important when we think about Jesus volunteering to lower himself. Psalm 8, verses 4 and 5. There's a question asked. Now before I read verses 4 and 5, we need to reestablish a principle that we've noted a couple of times already in this brief study. That is this. In the Bible... There are some scriptures which have a primary and a secondary application. Now, what does that mean? That means it is applicable not only to the age or the area that is being talked about at that specific time, but it also refers to another age or era yet to transpire. Verses 4 and 5 have a primary and a secondary application. Primary application is talking about David. Secondary application is talking about the Messiah. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor, or majesty. Now that is true of David, wasn't it? It's true of men that we have been made a little lower than the angels. But it was also true of Christ. But it could only 
become true of Christ if he volunteered to lower himself. He had to lower himself from that position that he held. He had to lower himself from that power that he had. He had to lower himself from that prestige he had. He had to lower himself so that he would become lower than the angels. But in lowering himself, he also made himself a candidate for something. And that something was to be elevated. I want to make a statement here. I'm going to repeat it again later. The way up is down. Now, why is this important for us to understand? Why is it so imperative that we see this prophecy in Christ? Why was it necessary for God's Son to voluntarily low himself? Why? It was necessary because Lucifer set a precedent in heaven itself by trying to elevate himself. And ever since then, mankind had been following in the footsteps of the enemy of God and the enemy of the human family in trying to elevate himself, and we still do it relative to ourselves. Why was it necessary for Jesus to volunteer to Lord himself? Turn to Isaiah chapter 49. In Isaiah chapter 49, we see again a primary and a secondary application of a verse of Scripture. Isaiah 49 and verse number 6. God is talking to Isaiah, and he is talking to Isaiah not only about himself, Isaiah, but he's also giving a prophecy to Isaiah about one yet to come whose name was Jesus. And he said, It is a white thing that thou shouldest be my servant, underscore that word, to raise up the tribes of Jacob. Now do you see that play on words there? When we think of a servant, what do we think of? Someone who is elevated or someone who is lower than someone else? Lower, right? Now notice what would take place as a result of Isaiah being a servant. It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up. And what does raise up mean? To elevate the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserve of Israel. So in Isaiah going uh, down and assuming the role of a servant, it would bring about an elevation to the tribes of Jacob and the household of Israel. The way up is down. Now that is exciting. That's good news, but it gets better. I will also give thee as a light to the Gentiles, and underscore this next phrase, for the rest of your life and living. I will also give thee for light to the Gentiles, and as if Isaiah were about to ask the question, why? God said, that thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. And verse 7, he continued, Thus saith the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, and his Holy One to him whom God despised. Why was it necessary for Jesus to lower himself? It was necessary for Jesus to lower himself so that he might become the salvation of God unto the end of the earth. Because Lucifer and all of the earth was on a path of self-exaltation. And the only way 
my brothers and sisters that salvation can be received is as we go down. As long as we are trying to promote ourselves, we can never experience salvation. If Jesus had not volunteered to Lord Himself, and I want you to get this, if Jesus had not volunteered to Lord Himself, you and I would yet be in our sin and our sinning. But because Jesus volunteered to Lord Himself, He gave us the opportunity to experience salvation. That's exciting. That's so exciting to me. If I were in a Pentecostal church about now, I would shout hallelujah. Jesus became your salvation, and Jesus became my salvation because he was willing to Lord himself. Now, did Jesus, in fact, fulfill the prophecy that we've seen in the book of Psalm and Isaiah? Did he fulfill that prophecy? Did he accomplish what was predicted? Go with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2. I want to begin reading in verse number 6. He has just made the statement in verse number 5, For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come where we speak. Then in verse 6, But one in a certain place testifies, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Or the son of man that thou visitest him? Does that sound familiar? We just read that a few moments ago in Psalm 8, didn't we? Verse number 7. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with honor and glory. And it set him over the works of thou, thy hands. That's interesting. But it gets even more interesting as we continue reading. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. Now, did that happen or has that happened with humanity? No. Who's it talking about? It's talking about Jesus. For in that he put all in subjection under him, talking of God about Jesus, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man, woman, Boy and girl. Did Christ fulfill the prophecy of Psalm 8 and Isaiah 49? Yes, he did. And you and I who have accepted Jesus as our personal Savior are a living testimony of God's great grace. Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. Beginning in verse number 6. This passage is talking about Christ. I think it was Dan uh, who made the statement that if he were rewriting the Bible, he would take out all the pronouns. Who, talking about Jesus, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He had the position. He had the power. He had the prestige. He did not think it to be equal, a robbery to be equal with God, but 
Verse number 7. He made himself of no reputation. What's it saying? He volunteered to lord himself. Father God, he said, I will voluntarily give up my position, my power, my prestige for the salvation of Danny Gerard. He made himself of no reputation. God the Father did not force him to do it. He took upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. He did what? He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. What must we conclude? We must conclude that the prophecy concerning Jesus was fulfilled. I want to notice one more passage that clearly defines his philosophy and lifestyle. Keep your finger here in Philippians 2 and turn back with me to Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20 and verse number 28. Jesus is talking and he said to that generation then and says to us today, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom of many. Notice that? He came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. Lucifer fell. Because Lucifer aspired to be elevated. The opposite is true of Jesus. Jesus was elevated because he volunteered to lower himself. Turn back to Philippians chapter 2 and notice verses 9 and 10. Wherefore, Paul said, on the basis of what he just shared, wherefore God hath highly, and I love this next phrase, exalted him. Notice that Jesus was not just exalted. He was, what? He was highly exalted. Why was he exalted? Because he chose the route of humility, he chose and volunteered to lower himself for the salvation of the human family. And because of this, God hath also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That in the name of Jesus, every knee should what? of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Now what does it mean to bow? Go down. You see, my brothers and sisters, the way up is down. And if you and I have Jesus in our lives, we're going to be like Jesus through the power of His Holy Spirit. And we do not stand on our tiptoes to see how high we can get. We drop to our knees to see how low we can become. What does this mean to you and to me? Is it really relevant for us today? I want you to keep your finger here in Philippians chapter 2 and turn back to Matthew chapter 20. Matthew chapter 20. I want us to notice again 
the very first word in verse number 28 that we read a few moments ago. In the King James Version, the very first word of Matthew 20 and verse 28 is anybody. Even. Now, should this tell us something? I want to back up and read, as Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story. Beginning in verse number 20. Then came to Jesus the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. I wish I had time to just really dissect that verse and, and tear it apart and put it back together again. There's so much there. And Jesus said unto her, What wilt thou? What do you want? And she said to Jesus, Grant that these my two sons, notice it, may sit. The one on thy right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. Now what was she asking? She was asking as a good mother that her sons be elevated, promoted, set apart. And Jesus answered and said, you know not what you ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and to be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, We are able. And Jesus said unto them, You shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared of my Father. Now here's another verse 24. I wish I had time. Maybe I'll come back to it sometimes. Really. Pull it apart and put it back together again. Now when the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. I cannot tell you how many church dissensions I have seen over the years because somebody wanted to be elevated, somebody wanted to be the big chief, and some of the others said, you are not going to be that way because really you are not any better than I am. But Jesus called them unto him and he said, listen very closely, you know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion or complete control over them, and they that are great exercise authority upon them. Now that's the way the Gentiles operate, he said. But, I want you to understand that you are to be different from the world. You're my disciple. You are not to act like the world. You are not to talk like the world. You are to be different in your attitude than the world is. But Jesus, how? Verse 26. But it shall not be so among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. And whosoever will be chief among you, let him be your servant. Why? You see, this is a reoccurring theme in the Gospels. We don't have time to notice all the passages. But I do want to read one more in Matthew chapter 23. Beginning in verse number 1. This spake Jesus to the multitude, to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All thereof, or therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do not ye after their works. What's he saying? You are to be different. For they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. They love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues. And greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be you not called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all you are brethren. And call a man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. 
Now to be called master for what is your master, even Christ. And here it is. You bring it down to a, a point now. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. Lucifer fell because he aspired to be elevated. And my brothers and sisters, the same thing happens in your life and the same thing happens in my life when we have an aspiration like Satan's. Now, Pastor Dan, does that mean that I'm not to try? Does that mean that I'm not to try to better myself? No. But the motive of heart and the attitude of mind is so very, very, very important. I want to go to... Acts chapter 5, while your finger is still in Philippians. Acts chapter 5, to give you a contrast. Between Jesus and the way most individuals do. In Acts chapter 5, there are two individuals mentioned in verses 36 and 37. One is the name of Thutis and the other is Judas. Notice Acts 5, verse 36. And before these days rose up Thutis, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves who were slain. And all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to naught. And after this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew away much people after him. He also perished and all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed or scattered. Question. What happened to the followers of Jesus after Jesus died? Did they diminish or did they grow? They grew. Why have the followers of Christ grown since his death? Because Christ chose to empty himself, to lower himself, and because Christ chose to lower himself, the church, the followers of Christ, have flourished. What happened to the followers of these two individuals after their death? They were scattered. They became nothing. Why? Because their followers tried to elevate themselves. You see that? My brothers and sisters, that happens in our lives as individuals. It happens in our lives as families. And it happens in our lives as churches. I love the Lowry Seventh-day Adventist Christian Church. But my brothers and sisters, if we ever come to the place where we're trying to elevate ourselves, we are in trouble. <laughs> the way this church will continue to grow is as we lower ourselves and volunteer to be servants. I am not trying to be better than Mark Finley. I want to be what God wants me to be. Understand what I'm saying? Because when I try to elevate myself, when you try to elevate yourself, when this church tries to elevate itself, we are in trouble. You see the way up? Is down. Now, how is it possible? I'm back in Philippians chapter 2, in closing. Philippians chapter 2. How is it possible? You see, I can't do it myself and neither can you. But it is possible. Underscore in your mind, if not in your Bible, verse number 5 of Philippians 2. Let this mind be in you, which was 
also in Christ Jesus. My brothers and sisters, the way up is that. Father, we don't have to tell you because you know we're in trouble. We're in trouble as a nation. We're in trouble as states. We're in trouble as counties. We're in trouble as families. We're in trouble as individuals. We're in trouble as churches. Oh, Father, we're in trouble. Because the enemy of the world is attempting one final assault to promote self-exaltation. Lord, would you help us to realize when everything is said and done that all we are is dirt? We're just dust. Father, would you help us to grasp with our minds and hearts some way, somehow, before it's too late, that him that Think if he stand, take heed, lest he fall. Oh Lord, revive in us the attitude of Jesus. Give us the mind of Christ. Help us to volunteer to lower ourselves so that soon and very soon you can be made happy and you can with great pleasure say of us as you said of Jesus, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Because I pray this prayer and give you praises for the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.